Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Katie and I am a third year first grade teacher and I'm so glad you're joining for today's video. I'll be honest, today's video is going to be kind of short, but I'm bringing you a topic that I've been wanting to make a video on for a long time. I am about to update my teaching portfolio. I have been teaching for three years and I haven't touched my portfolio in those three years since I got my first job. And now for a reason that I can't quite share yet, I'm about to go through and update my whole portfolio. So if you're curious as to why I'm updating it, make sure you subscribe to my channel and you will find out in the next couple videos probably. So I wanted to make a video today to go over what's inside my teaching portfolio. And I know there are tons of videos about this on YouTube, but this one's a little bit different because these are the things that I put inside my portfolio when I had this much teaching experience. Okay, so I had my internship and my practicum experiences and jobs before I was a teacher, but as far as like actual years as a teacher in my own classroom, hadn't done that yet. So I had to think out of the box and kind of think about what would I want to showcase about my teaching ability in my teaching portfolio to get a job as a first year teacher. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. The template that I used is from Pocket Full of Primary on TPT. I will link it down below. She's updated it since I made this one, so it looks just a little bit different formatting wise, but the content is still the same. And I would definitely recommend getting that portfolio template because it was super helpful for me and easy to use, and I just think it looks really nice. I got a nice kind of leather covered binder from, I don't even know where, probably Office Depot or Walmart. You can just go somewhere and get one Target. I think Target has a cool one that's got like a clear cover so your cover page shows through now so I'm probably not gonna buy a new one but if I was buying one I would probably go look for that one um, but I'll try to link a similar one in the description box if you want to go get a kind of leather binder it just looks nice and professional so opening up the portfolio on the inside I have my cover that just says teaching portfolio and then I have my four tabs that I use for my four sections. The first one is informational documents. And I put all of my papers inside page protector sleeves and then I just kind of taped the dividers over here on the edge. I think you can get page protectors that have tabs as well, but I just used like clear packing tape and it worked great. So in my informational document section, I had my resume, cover letter, references, philosophy of education, my teaching certificate, praxis scores, EdTPA scores, and formal observations from my student teaching experience. I really love this table of contents because it organizes each section for you, so if you use this in an interview, it would be really easy to use. So walking through each piece, the first thing that I have was my resume. Obviously, I've locked some things out for privacy, but this is kind of a copy of it, and I also kept extra copies of the resume in the front cover of my portfolio. And I have my cover letter. I just kind of put a generic one in here. And then when I interviewed, I made it more specific to each school district. Then I put the reference page from my online application that had the name and the contact information for all of my references. And then I did my philosophy of education. So I really liked how I saw, um, I think it was Michelle from Pocket Full of Primary. She outlined it with why I teach, what I teach, and how I teach. And I really liked that format. So I've got a quote and then those three sections just kind of outlining my philosophy of education. Then I put in a copy of my certification. And then I have all of my test scores. So I have all of the Praxis scores that I needed to receive that certification in here, as well as my EdTPA portfolio score. After that, I put copies of the formal observations that I had done during my student teaching in here. I just kind of photocopied and scanned in all of the notes and all of the reviews that I got while I was student teaching because I think these were valuable pieces of evidence that showed me as a teacher and what I can bring because it was very recent. And that's all I have in that first section. So the next section was awards and certificates. Again, I have the little divider. It's all in the plastic page protectors. And in this section, I put some trainings that I did while I was in undergrad, AMSTI, it's Alabama Math and Science. Um, and so I have math and science, and then I had my substitute cert certification in here, and then my conduct course certification as well. So I just put 
the actual certificate and then the letter that I received from the State Department as well. Certificate, letter from the state, substitute, certification, and yeah, there we go. The third tab, I put lesson plan examples. So I used lesson plans from my school experience and filled my portfolio with those so I could talk about my teaching style and how I teach in each subject area in an interview. So here's my uh, table of contents. I had my EdTPA because those were my most in-depth lesson plans that I could talk the most about. A STEM unit that I did in my internship. I have an English ESL language unit that I used to teach language for kindergartners when I was doing my ESOL internship. I have subject integration lessons, trade book lessons, investigation math lessons, an example of an assessment that I differentiated for different EL students, and then an example of my weekly plan template. All of these things I made in school. Not, I had no teaching experience. I was a first year teacher right out of the gate, but I took everything that I did in school and included it in here so I would have it as examples to use during an interview. So here's kind of, I did not put all of these in page protectors because there were so many. So I just used binder clips to clip like this is my EdTPA lesson. This is my science STEM unit and so forth and so on. So I clipped them together so it was easier for me to see so I could pull those examples easy. And then the last section is my classroom management section. In this section, here's my table of contents, I had to just kind of envision what I wanted my first year classroom to look like. And it was a really good exercise and practice to do that anyways. It prepared me for my interview and it prepared me for my first year of teaching. So I have setup, classroom values, behavior philosophy, behavior tracking, procedures, managing work, an example of a parent letter and a sub communication letter. So here's kind of what it looks like. I have an outline of what I wanted my future classroom to look like. I just kind of designed it to use um, as an example and I had my workable areas and I was able to talk about the traffic throughout my classroom and collaborative work with the seating. And then I gave a page right here with picture examples that I pulled from the internet. So I wanted to use these three tier drawers in my room. I wanted them to be grouped in desks kind of like this. I just scoured Pinterest and looked for pictures and then described why I picked the pictures that I did. And I used these bold face words to kind of give me good um, talking points during my interview. So if they said, how do you want your classroom set up? You could say, oh, I want it for collaboration. I want it to be traffic free and provide an a chance for my students to demonstrate autonomy and to be autonomous around the room and um, to show responsibility for their supplies. So that kind of helped me during my interview as well. I have more pictures of my classroom, classroom library, um, and then I had my classroom values. So I talked about how I would want to do the value system in my classroom rather than having rules, a set of agreed values to build community, respect, see how the bold words are helping out there. And again, this is just from Pinterest. I pulled it from Pinterest and I was like, I like how that teacher did that. I want to do that. And I put it in my portfolio. Then I have my behavior plan. Um, I used some book examples that I had read, so I would recommend doing this too. Um, just like I based my behavior plan off of the Teaching Love and Logic book. And then here are some phrases that I would use that demonstrate that behavior plan, kind of showing my style. Even though I hadn't taught yet, this is what I wanted to implement in my first year classroom. Have my behavior tracking, some examples of how I did it in internship and how my teacher, my student teacher, cooperating teacher, that's the one, how my cooperating teacher tracked behavior. And then um, example procedures. So I pulled all of these from Pinterest and I was like, this is how I want to do my procedure charts. So I could set a foundation, make them simple, effective, and explain model and practice. I kind of outlined why I picked these examples. I have a list of all the procedures I would teach, the way I would manage student work, using table groups and take home folders. And then an example of a parent letter for the beginning of the year, which I still use, like a very similar parent letter. Um, and then an example of just something that I would give to a sub who was coming into my room to give them information about my class for the day. 
So I hope this was helpful if you're making your very first teaching portfolio. Just know you don't have to have all of the experience and everything put together. You don't have to have a single year teaching experience to make one of these. Think about what you want your classroom to look like and this is your chance to really reflect on what you've seen in internship and practicum and put it into practice and pull pictures from the internet, pull pictures from your student teaching, put them in here and type up that justification and it'll really help you during your interviews. Some administration may even ask you to leave your portfolio there so they can look through it, which is awesome. And then if not, pull it out during your interview and use it to help you explain your answers. I don't want to say it's a crutch. I would say it's like a very useful tool that will help you even when you're nervous and a little bit like anxious in an interview. Those bold face words will remind you like, okay, I've got this. I know what I'm doing and don't be nervous. You can do it. People hire first year teachers all the time. Everybody's a first year teacher at some point. So just really, really prepare for those interviews and you're going to be great. I hope this video is helpful for you guys. I might make another one when I update my portfolio now that I have three years of teaching experience. It might look a little bit different. So if that's something you'd like to see, leave a comment below and I would love to do that for y'all. And again, make sure you like and subscribe and stay tuned to see why I'm even updating my portfolio in the first place. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.